folks, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living. Uh, I wanted to give you another weekend update video. So we were able to get into a few more projects, but um, we also came up with some problems <laughs> in our in our attempts to do so. So uh, first I want to get into the beehive because remember from last week, I found that queen cell in my middle hive, the hive that was struggling. So I didn't know what that was gonna turn into. So I gotta get into that hive. And also the hive on the end, I needed to do a further inspection there. So I wanted to wrap that up. And then also check out the grow light. We're on week two from planting the seeds to the grow light in operation. And I think you're gonna be kind of surprised about the progress that's happened with the grow light in just two weeks time. And then also the retaining wall. We've kind of come up on some stumbling blocks and I'll tell you more about that in the video, but uh, thanks guys for joining and um, welcome to the rest of our weekend. Back, um, back in the hives and I'm um, checking on the status of hive three. In the last video, I didn't get a chance to really dig down deep into the hive, but um, what I'm finding is they are doing fantastic. I'm holding a frame right now. It's just loaded with um, brood cells and this was the hive, interestingly, that did not do well last winter. Um, this was the hive that barely overwintered and they were really, really weak and I wasn't sure if they were gonna make it through. I was trying to build them up last summer, where I remember that really clearly, and they've just taken off. Um, so they are fantastic. They are almost three boxes deep of brood. So this is an example of one of the hives that's all bees and no honey. Sometimes you have that, um, Sometimes bees end up making a lot of honey and sometimes they just make a lot of bees. And this is a hive that's making a lot of bees right now. So I'm gonna make sure that they stay fed. Um, so very, very happy. This is a very strong hive. I just wanna make sure that they're getting all the um, food that they need. So looking really good there. Here's something cool that you don't see every day. Here's a bee emerging out of the um, its cell. So it's a bee being born, I guess you could say. This is coming right out of the um, honeycomb cell right there. You can see the legs moving a little bit. And there it is. First bee taking its first steps out on the honeycomb. It's kind of white in color, isn't it? A very light color. I've got another one right here. You can see. Uh, it's a head, kind of chewed through the cap right there. Some antenna coming out, here comes a head. And you know I had to check on this hive again. I gotta look at that queen cell and see if it's still there. See if I can see a queen this time around. Um, I'm just gonna assess one more time to see if they need a, an extra level to expand. All right, well I'm finding the queen right here. So there she is. Uh, didn't see her last time, she was hiding from me. So, um, evidence of a queen. That's great. I wanted to look and see if that queen cell was still on here. I'm a, um, guessing that this is the original queen because of her size. If a new queen had emerged, she wouldn't really be this big yet because they don't get that big until they get fertilized. And that usually takes a few weeks for a queen to be mature enough to fly out of the hive to go get fertilized and then come back in. And you know what I don't see anymore? Here's the queen. What I, and it's funny because all the bees will face her and follow her. Um, what I'm not seeing in this hive is that queen cell that I saw like three days ago. So maybe the bees destroyed it, I don't know. But it's funny because it was hanging on the top of one of these frames. I'm gonna check the frames again, but I don't even see it anymore. So anyway, the queen is alive and well, and well, she's laying. She's laying eggs still, so that's good. But uh, yeah, interesting tales from the beehive, guys. The queen, the queen is long live the queen, right? Guys, the sun's finally back out after a weekend of rain. So uh, it was cr incredible. We haven't really seen rain like that in a long time. Two solid days of rain. And it's about, um, you know, we had a few hours in the morning, as you could see earlier in the video. Uh, we got some things done, got a chance to look in the beehives and got some more work done on the wall, but Really, with all of this um, rain, uh, we've we've got a great soaking in the ground. And check out how the plants are doing outside here in these pots. Um, the 
romaine lettuce is looking really great and the kale's even kind of growing a little bit and the beets so you know i feel like in the potatoes over here you know they're really holding their own i haven't touched them haven't really watered them in several days but i wanted to compare that and um, also give you guys an update on the grow light so this is the two week mark for the grow light that's going uh, it's been going almost 24 7. now i'm actually taking um, some evenings off turning the light off in the evenings uh, to give it a break from the UV and um, let's just take a look here. So I've got the light back on and things you know are definitely twice as tall as they were a couple weeks ago. So this is the container of beets and you can see that well I'm not a botanist but I, I the secondary petal <clears throat> the secondary leaves are coming out right now. So you've got your primary leaves when the seed comes out of the when the sprout comes out of the seed and then uh, the beginnings of the secondary the secondary leaves right here you can see so same same with the spinach next here you can a nice variety of sprouted out and the primary leaves that came out first are giving way to the secondary leaves right here the very first spinach leaves all right um, something else really funny has been happening let me scroll over here to the one of the uh, containers that really didn't produce any sprouts, but interestingly, they've sprouted some mushrooms. So I thought that was really interesting because usually mushrooms are something that come out when it's dark. Uh, it's not something that you would expect uh, exposed to chronic light, but we've got mushrooms here and uh, there was a couple more, but they've sort of fallen over. But I just thought that was really bizarre just to see to see mushrooms growing under a, under a grow light. Uh, the arugula is looking really great. Nice patch there. Um, starting to see some cilantro come out. So I was really surprised about that. I'm, I thought those were kind of duds, but if that's what that is. So if the cilantro is coming, then I'm going to be delighted because I love cilantro. Um, over here, this is iceberg lettuce. And back here is kale looking really good. I think that'll be great to put in some raised beds um, once we get that set up outside for the fall. And then the big winner is the green beans. So um, big leaves here and uh, a nice tall plant over there. So I'm just curious to, to see when they'll bloom. You know, it's almost like they're getting ready to um, do really well. So I've got three strong plants right there for green beans. So pretty impressive. I think, you know, this is a week. This is only two weeks after the seeds were planted for the grow light so just this is a two week update i mean it's amazing in two weeks time that i've got plants that are you know almost 12 inches tall green bean wise i might have to lower those down or put them outside because i'm not going to have much more room i mean the floor joist is right there so anyways guys that's the update for the grow light and we'll be excited to see you know in another week's time um, what my goal is is to get some raised beds built uh, so I can transplant all of these into raised beds for fall and keep them closer to the house so I can maintain them better. Um, but I'd love to see, you know, the, the spinach and the arugula, the kale and the lettuce, and then the beets, you know, and the green beans um, have opportunity to have a few more months of growing. But getting them started as seedlings, saving the bulk of the work that's kind of difficult to do right now. Um, but get them to be established plants and see what they can do in September. If we can still get some, some uh, yield off of them. And back to the retaining wall. So we left off here at the corner and Brian has managed to take the rest of the ties that we've had and extend the wall down. But you can see not as tall <laughs> because of the fact that um, one of the hiccups that we encountered was that the supply places have been out of stock of ties. Um, we've called around to, I think he called, you know, four different places trying to connect to people on Marketplace and Craigslist and everybody's been out of stock. In fact, the one place where he um, purchased the ties last time, um, they had uh, bought out one of the supply places he was looking at. So, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't, um, get any more ties so we kind of were stuck with just this amount that we had 
Um, the other hiccup was the rainy weather. Um, every day it rained starting right about at noon, so it never got quite a full day of work in. Um, so it really kind of slowed down the progress of the wall. But as you can see here, there's the last few ties on the tractor and just about at this, um, this height, you know, the three, the three ties here, um, going up one more level as a, it, we, I think it, he needs about, um, 30 more to complete it. So it's been kind of a hassle trying to figure out where to get these 30 ties, but <laughs> that's what we need to do to, um, to finish up the job. But I, I guess one good thing that has come out of the delay, uh, you know, not being able to finish the wall right away is that it's given us a chance to sort of reevaluate our process. And in combination with the great, you know, really informative feedback that people have given us, the comments about um, different ways to do dead men and different ways to secure your wall, I think we're going to have that opportunity to get in there and do some variations for the rest of the wall to add more stability to it uh, regarding the dead men. Um, and just making sure the wall is more secure with using the T-post design and rebar. So definitely want to appreciate, we definitely appreciate everyone's feedback and the time that they took to give us some suggestions about um, additional reinforcements for the wall. Anyway, so let's see what Brian's got to say. Four more. So are they harder to cut with it? You said the, the ties are almost twice as heavy, this new batch. I think this one's going to pop right here. Like, trapezoidal. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one's not shaped properly. But they are a little bit... The new batch is a little bit bigger than the previous. Well, they're taller, but they don't look like they're thicker. Uh-huh. It's pretty smooth, it's the same. Mm-hmm. So is that one over there going to stay lower? No. No. It'll be, it'll be six, so it'll be up to here. Oh, okay. It should be the same height as that side over there. It should be a nice, big, huge flood. Mm -hmm. Some of that dirt can come down. Oh, okay. It'll just change the road down a little bit. Long carriage bolts. Mm -hmm. And then the piece that's on here, I'll just put a carriage bolt all the way through. Mm -hmm. I'll double up this a little bit. I'll put another piece on that protect these screws. So I'll, I'll be pulling on here more. And maybe I'll put a bag of cement on top of every thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder if you could just do the T, not have to have it in, it could just be on the bottom of the bracket. It has to be at least halfway up. Oh. I know what you're saying, put like something across that. Right. That's what I was going to do with the cement. Yeah. Just lay a bag of cement over it. Yeah. Like an 80 pound bag of cement on it, it's pretty heavy. Mm-hmm. Um. Someone else mentioned that the a real way to secure is to make sure your dirt is compacted. Oh. They, they said for highways, that's how they do it. And I forgot what he said. It's called compacted dirt. <laughs> compacted. Well, yeah. I mean, once I get the dirt in here, I can drive the tractor back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a fair amount of weight. Mm -hmm. Help compact it. Yeah. So every time it rains or it snows and it melts and, yeah. you know, because the dirt around the house after it was excavated, you know, compacted more, you know, and the water trench line, all that kept, yeah, right, yeah, compacting so more. It would be so an expansion joint, basically, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't push on the wall so much. Oh, so when there is, when the dirt does move, it would just squish into the foam, you know, get that same white foam that we had. Oh, uh huh. I mean, there's some give to that. Also make a like an air barrier you could nail on the on this side all the way down. Mm -hmm. I look at that too before I back forward. Well, guys, can you see what's behind me here? So 
Fortunately, this week, Brian was able to secure additional railroad ties. You know, and it's funny because he got them from the company that bought out the original company he was looking at. But the good news is that the company he got them from price matched. So instead of, you know, upcharging, being the middleman, he was able to price match Brian with the, uh, the pricing that he paid at the original place he was looking at. So, uh, Looks like about a dozen more ties here, and he's got to get one more load to be finished. So luckily they do have him in stock, and he's going to be able to pick them up later this week. But um, we do appreciate all the uh, feedback people have been giving us and been excited to kind of complete our project. I definitely have some great ideas for what to do with that area once we get the wall in and backfilled and all of that. So stay tuned in the next few videos. I think I'm going to get around to my you know landscaping design for the back side of the house and um you know fingers crossed for the bees you know i'm going to keep feeding them and feeding them this summer and you know if they end up producing a little bit of honey to sample then i'll get it get to maybe get a jar or something this year but this might be one of those years where um it's an all bee year and they'll be really strong overwintering and then we'll have a honey year next year and definitely keeping an eye on those grow lights so i think i'm going to transplant all of those plants um, into raised beds in the back of the house in a couple in a few weeks so guys thanks for coming along we'll see you next time bye